It has been a couple months since we saw a Subaru on the channel, and no, this is not my car. I'm not the biggest fan of this Subaru Legacy in particular. I really love the Subaru Legacy, and I think it's got a really good heritage. Earlier Legacies were actually really, really cool. There was the first generation Legacy, which started out in the very early 1990s. It did look quite similar to other Japanese Econa boxes of the day, Nissan Maxima and the Toyota Camry. I think I might have a soft spot for that early legacy because my family used to have one years and years and years ago. I only have very faint memories of it. And it wasn't just nostalgia that has a part in what makes the early legacy special. They were also used for rallying. I think New Zealand 1993 with Colin McRae at the wheel. It either won or did really well, I can't remember for sure. But it was a reasonably successful rally car back in the day before the Impreza actually came out and completely changed the game for everybody. And there were various turbo versions and wagons and all that stuff you could get. It was really awesome. You can't find them anymore because they've all rusted away. And then the second generation Subaru Legacy is definitely a little bit more 90. It still looks quite a bit like the Camrys of the day, but that's when they introduced the Outback, which was hugely successful. To this day, it is still the best selling station wagon in the United States. If you can call it that, it kind of looks like an SUV to me, but whatever. The third generation is kind of a derivative of the second generation. There's not really all that much to me that sets it apart. It just got bigger headlights and looks a little bit more modern, but it did have a nicer interior. Then there's the fourth generation, which I think was the last truly good legacy. You could get like a flat six Outback sedan, which is really, really strange, but there were also turbos that you could get. There was the LL Bean edition, which was like the top end luxury trim branded by a clothing company, which I've always thought was really interesting and weird, but cool. The fifth generation Subaru Legacy, which came out, I believe in 2010, is really the beginning of what Subaru is doing these days. If anybody has noticed, they just really don't care anymore about the things that make them special. At least in the United States, the last truly Subaru enthusiast car that they make that's of any interest whatsoever is the new WRX. They made it look weird. They pushed all the good features like adjustable suspension on the CVT and they had the audacity, the audacity to call it the Subaru performance transmission. Like why? That is so awful. I will never get anywhere near a CVT WRX in my entire life. Coming from the guy that used to own an automatic WRX, I know, but at least that car was a traditional four-speed automatic, not a CVT. Moving on from the WRX, which by the way has three more horsepower, three more horsepower than the outgoing model. Sure, the power delivery is a little bit better. The STI is gone. The Legacy just doesn't offer any interesting, fun enthusiast-like features. The Impreza is getting a redesign and they're dropping the manual transmission. So Subaru clearly is marketing their cars towards a different segment these days than what they used to, basically what Toyota was doing 15 years ago. All I'm trying to say is that Subaru does not care about what makes them special anymore, at least to me and every other enthusiast or Subaru fan starting to feel a little bit betrayed by Subaru. And I think it begun with this fifth generation of the Subaru Legacy. Full disclaimer here, this is not a bad car. When it comes to commuting every day, you want something reliable to get you to work, to get you to school, something you can always count on, <laughs> except for when the head gasket goes. And even in snow, rain, whatever the weather, this Subaru Legacy for around 10 grand, depending on condition, is a good car. But that's only really if you're like my best friend who owns this car and you're not really all that interested in cars. This is the only possible use case for this car right here. This is going to be a very boring video, but we're going to talk about it and I'm going to show you around the car as I usually do. Then we'll take it out for a drive and then we'll give it a Doug score. I'm just kidding.
All right, let's have a look at this powertrain. This is the EJ25, world famous four cylinder boxer engine that is definitely not known for blowing any head gaskets whatsoever. It's a myth and anybody who says otherwise is just wrong. And it produces 170 horsepower and it results in around a average MPG rating of 26 miles per gallon. It is worth noting the last Legacy GT, the 2.5 GT, was sold in this fifth generation configuration. But in my experience, they're really, 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 really difficult to find. If I ever see one, it's rare enough for me to take a picture and be really surprised. <laughs> there was also the 3.6R, which was a boxer six cylinder, which explains why there seems to be a lot of extra room in this engine bay because it's also designed to hold a full extra set of two cylinders under here. My research dictates that that is actually a true automatic in those cars, not a CVT like in this. Like I said, it's 170 horsepower in this car and that is sent to all four wheels via a continuously variable transmission, which Subaru called Lineartronic. And this was also available with a six speed manual transmission, which is what I would get without question or hesitation if I got one of these cars. But really, if I wanted a Subaru Legacy, I would likely just get the fourth generation because everything that I just stated earlier. They're not perfect, they do have some problems, but Subaru is known for this powertrain, so they do sort of know what they're doing. All right, let's talk about styling real quick. Now, I believe the best looking generation of the Subaru Legacy is the one that came before this again, because no matter which specification or trim you went for, whether it be the LL Bean Outback or the lower, more sports car focused, 2.5 GT Legacy sedan or wagon. I think that car and on the facelift, they nailed the styling of it. Still looks distinctly Subaru, but also sporty and also usable every day, which is I think what they should be designing their cars for. This car is clearly designed for the casual motorist. There's no emotion put into the styling at all, if you ask me. It just looks like car. This hood right here is really flat. The headlights are really big. The wheels look quite small, but the car is so tall. There's so much vertical amount of car and these sills on the bottom are so pronounced and lowered to the ground compared to the rest of the car that to me, it just looks really weird. This is my opinion is they designed this car as the Outback, the raised up wagon first, and then they turned it into a sedan. And that look is just not it doesn't work with me at all. Still, at least it's not the current 2023 Legacy, which is awful looking. They thought, you want us to make our car look a little bit different? We hear your complaints, we'll make it a little bit more different. And then they gave us this. And the thing is, is that this Legacy and the new Legacy still look quite similar. They didn't really change the game that much like they did from the first to the second generation or the third to the fourth generation. It's just been generic and hasn't changed that much ever since, which again shows you really how much effort Subaru wants to put into making this car stand apart from its competition. They're not doing a really good job if you ask me. All right, let us check practicality real quick. There's no button on the trunk lid, which is a little annoying. You have to either use the button inside the car or just hold the button down on the key here and they're greeted with the Subaru beeping sound. It's not really all that interesting back here. It's definitely large enough to qualify itself as a decent mid-sized sedan to use every day. Rear seats do fold down with these little latches here. There you go, if somebody kidnaps you in their Subaru Legacy, you could either wait until the head gaskets blow and it has to be left on the side of the road, or you can just pull that if you're in a hurry and you need to get back home. All right, let's check rear seat room. Now, I am six foot three, tall, skinny, whatever. Let's see how it is. It's worth noting that when we talk about the back seat of this car, it has seat covers, which 
I'm not really a fan of. I think they're quite ugly, but oh well, it's not my car, so we'll gloss over that. You can see what material the seat is made with on the center armrest. It's like this textured cloth. Not really all that interesting. It, I guess it looks quite nice. So leg room, I barely have enough. I don't really have a lot of feet room down here, so you can't really stretch out very often and get comfortable back here. It might get a little bit uncomfortable for longer journeys. For headroom, you could definitely search for the areas where you have none and find them pretty easily by just wiggling your head around. But if you just sit here like a normal person would, totally fine. There's not really a, a lot to complain about. We fold this down. Lovely cup holders with rubber tabs, which will hold drinks in tight enough. And it's a nice convenient feature to have if you're not using this middle seat. In the center here, there is a storage cubby and that's about it. Thank you, Subaru. Every corner of this vehicle has a grab handle, even for the driver, which is such a nice thing to have. Materials are decently okay. It's got this aluminum trim here, which you could get wood as well. Got a little cup holder and some storage down here in this door panel. A cup holder that you would never reasonably trust. But yeah, it's just, it's boring, but it's definitely okay for adult passengers back here. So yeah, let's check out the front seat now. All right, front seat of the fifth generation Subaru Legacy. Let's see how it is. The first thing that is immediately noticeable for me when I sit in the front seat of this car is just how far away the dashboard is. I really don't like this flat dashboard design. It gives me the idea that they basically just didn't care. They just thought, yeah, we'll just stick a panel there. It'll be good, whatever, move on. There's some cup holders up here in the front that have these pathetic looking plastic tabs on them. And as a result, they don't really hold the cup or your water bottle in that well. Hated seats, which work and are very hot, which is good. Here's where I have a problem with this car. This is the first Subaru Legacy. At least I think it is. It's the first Subaru Legacy and Subaru's sixth car to have a continuously variable transmission. And even shifting it into gear for me just isn't really a nice feeling. This whole shifter just feels cheap. Putting your car in gear is supposed to be some sort of event it's supposed to be something satisfying. You're supposed to be supposed to just put it in gear. You're all ready to go and enjoy your journey. But this just, it's basically a teaser and a precursor to how the car is going to drive. Climate controls above that, which are nice and easy to understand. And above that, there's another storage area, which would be good for sunglasses and things like that. And up here, there's also another sunglasses holder, which isn't very good. It's quite small. So good luck fitting something in that. And it's not really easy to close. In terms of infotainment and things like that, yes, it has a radio and it has aux. And you can also play CDs, which is good, but it's just a normal radio. There's nothing really all that special about it in this car. Up here, there is a clock up in the dashboard right next to your field of vision when you're driving. Power driver's seat, which is really nice to have, but a manual passenger seat. I guess it's fun, you know, if you're about to feel that 170 horsepower and you want it to feel a little bit more dramatic, just pull up on this and then let your body go limp and whoa, it's like a roller coaster all of a sudden. And if you own the car, who cares? If your passenger starts complaining, then Oh well, that sucks for them. In terms of materials, I do have to say the material quality of and touching things in this car is impressive to me considering the time period. Just going into the 2010s, lots and lots and lots of cars, even from higher up brands, had lots and lots of crappy plastics and things on the interior. But this car, you can definitely find them dashed about but overall i don't think it's that bad in here this steering wheel does feel quite plasticky and cheap on the middle but at least it's not plasticky and cheap on the outside where you're touching it the material quality in this car is a lot better than i would have expected but on the outside a lot of the panels this door for instance 
you shut it and it sounds hollow. It could just be missing some sound editing material, but the hood also sounds completely hollow. So does the trunk lid. A lot of people won't be bothered by that, but I think it's worth noting because it makes me feel like Subaru did take a quality downturn when it came to this car, at least on the outside. Oh, that is such an awful sound. But at least the inside doesn't feel all that bad. We are going to drive the 2012 Subaru Legacy. To get going, there is an electronic parking brake over here, I forgot to mention, which is nice, I guess, if you're into that sort of thing. And again, it's just, I think it's the button on this shifter that just feels so not nice to press, to put it in gear. Just a little annoying considering you do that a lot when you own a car. Really ever since it came out, the Subaru Legacy has definitely taken a back seat to the Outback version. And it really does show with this generation. It just looks like a sedan derivative of the Outback that doesn't really look all that nice. Yes, I know there was a wagon version of this sold in other markets, but we never got it here. Really, it's the Outback that sells and that's true to this day. You do see new legacies driving around, but it's not nearly as often as the Outback. And it shows because Subaru actually, I think they only sell the legacy here in the United States now. So I think it's pretty clear that the legacy is not long for this world, which is sad. But to be honest, for me, the legacy died with this one. It's just not that exciting. It's not that interesting to drive or to look at. It's just a car. I mean, I'm I'm struggling to think of words to say about it because there's nothing really interesting about the way this car drives. Yeah, it drives nice. It's reasonably quiet. It's reasonably comfortable. It's got enough power to get it up to traffic speeds quite easily. It doesn't sound all that good. And this CVT just makes things miserable. I have to say though, this thing is really, really, really quiet at idle. Just sitting at a traffic light, I thought for a second that it had one of those auto stop start things because I just didn't hear it. But yeah, it's very quiet. We're going to give it a bit of gas here. Not a, not a crazy, not a whole lot because again, it's really not that exciting or enjoyable when you put your foot down. So let's hit it. The CVT drone just makes it so awful. It's just, ugh. Could be a good thing. If you find yourself, you need to teach yourself to drive a little bit smoother, calmer, be better with saving fuel. This could be the car for you because there is absolutely no enjoyment whatsoever in putting your foot down. Some cars, even when they're slow, are still kind of fun to screw around with and, you know, wring their neck. This car is just so dull. But it does have a manual mode, and let's see how that is. First gear. Second gear. These simulated shifts definitely feel simulated. You don't feel anything mechanical change. It's just the revs drop. It's... And the paddles feel a little bit plasticky. Even with shifting gears yourself, it is really nice to have if you're just sick of that CVT drone and you want to enjoy the driving experience a little bit more, then that's easily something that you can do just fine. What worries me a little bit, considering the fact that this is a Subaru and they're known for having head gasket problems, dare I say it, there's no temperature gauge. There is a light that will turn on when the temperature is too low and a light that will turn on when the temperature is too high and that's all you get. Instead, you get this MPG gauge in the gauge cluster, which is nice. Again, this car is clearly tailored more towards economical driving than it is towards sporty driving, but erasing the temperature gauge 
I think you might need that, especially with a Subaru. The ride comfort is, it's a little bit bouncy, as you may be able to tell. You definitely feel all the imperfections in the road, but I think it's damped enough that it's not incredibly annoying. It's just boring to drive. There's really nothing exciting about it. It's just, it just drives, it's a car. Yeah, just a car. When you're driving normally, the CVT doesn't intrude too much. It doesn't make too much noise or it's not all that annoying. And it is nice going up hills and things. You don't have to deal with that annoying kick down that automatic cars tend to have. But when you inch your foot down on the throttle just a little bit, you notice it holding its revs at that one point and the noise gets annoying so, so, so fast drone again. Yeah, it's just the drone just makes it feel unnatural. So it's about what you'd expect. It's quite boring. There's nothing all that interesting about it. But if it allowed the legacy to live for a couple more generations, then I guess they did something right. I don't think the legacy is long for this world. They're probably not going to make another one after the current one. But if you have the right use case for it, which is driving it every day, and you wanna save money on fuel, then it's good enough. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna end that video there, everybody. So thank you for watching. Hope you all have a great day. Bye-bye.